Hello and welcome to my pre-hospital emergency care videos. My name is Jason Sadler and I am a paramedic with the HCPC here in the UK. As a disclaimer, all of my videos are from my own education and from my own qualifications and the experience I've learned in the pre-hospital environment. Currently, I work as a lecturer in Swansea University. Um, I also do work on the bank for the Welsh Ambulance Service, NHS Trust, as well as working for small independent companies. All of the information I'm giving is solely to do with myself and not connected in with any of those companies. Please can I emphasise, it is really important that you get yourself booked onto a registered, recognised qualification and you only work within your scope of practice. We really hope you do enjoy these videos. Please subscribe, please like and if you would like any other videos, please send us a comment. One of the first things we all need to like to get sorted out is our equipment and our kit bags. Kit bags come in a whole range of sizes, colours, materials, all sorts of things. Um, from little personal kits that you may keep on your uh, belt, to kits you may have in your car which are waterproof and wipe clean, to uh, kits that look after oxygen cylinders or other cylinders. It's a massive kit and it really will depend on your skill level and your equipment that you're going to be carrying. The one thing that we do suggest is you only ever carry what you are trained and qualified to use. Please don't start carrying extra equipment and the problem being if you buy a bag which is too big you want to try and fill it up so you see spaces and you try and put extra equipment in there. Don't do it. Work out the equipment you'll need uh, depending on your qualification and your training and then find a bag to fit your equipment. Obviously equipment will increase as your skill level increases. Now throughout the training videos we are going to concentrate on this bag here which I've set up specifically for training. So what we're going to do now is go through this bag which is set up for level 3 uh, level of pre-hospital emergency care. Depending on which company you're working for and which environment you're working for, the level of personal protection uh, equipment will uh, depend on that environment. Um, so some environments you may be wearing complete coveralls, uh, you may need to have a variety of different gloves, eye protection, steel toe cap boots, high vis, waterproofs, helmet, again you may have ones with eye protection built in. Um, such as on these, you may have to have additional lighting and stuff. So again, you know, if you're working in water, you need to be trained, qualified, have personal protection, uh, such as a personal flotation device, dry suits. You know, you just need to know the environment that you're working in. So this is our training bag that we're going to use for the pre-hospital emergency care training. So as you can see we've set up as training only. The idea of this bag, it can be used as a rucksack, obviously manual handling is important because there is a fair weight to the bags. Um, and then the layout of the bag is absolutely vital as well. So what we've got to think about is the order in which we would need our equipment which would make the scenario run as smoothly as possible. So what we've done on the outside here, we've put our PPE, our SPO2 and our tourniquet. So these are the things that we feel we would need really quickly. So if we open up the first pouch, we've got things like our eye protection, you may have uh, gloves in your pocket, you may have a pocket mask, but what we've also got are things like our shears for actually cutting off clothing to expose and examine. We've got our arterial tourniquet so that we can deal with catastrophic hemorrhage straight away. Um, we've also got our SPO2 so that we can get to 
this uh, easily so that we can place this on the patient's finger to decide whether we need to administer um, supplementary oxygen or not. We've also got our pen torch as a basic observation and then importantly we've got our alcohol gel so that we can sanitise our hands uh, before, after and maybe during the incident. Coming down to the next pouch is our AED pouch and there's a whole range of AEDs out on the market. So again, we're not going into any specific one, but on a different video, we will talk about the use of an AED. If when we've got the patient laid in front of us, and I'm gonna get a patient now. So when we've got a patient in front of us, we always like to work above the patient's head if we can. Well, with this in mind, our bag layer is important. So with our bag facing us, we can already get to our personal protective equipment. We can then cut off any clothing that needed to be removed, put our PP on, etc. We can also get to that all vital AED and place that to the left hand side of the patient as per the Resuscitation Council state. From here, with this particular bag, as we open the bag up fully and drop the bag down, the first thing that comes out is our blanket, which could be an aid for my personal protection, and I use it as a kneeling aid. I might end up pulling it underneath the head of the patient to raise the head up. But what I want to show you is the layout of this bag. So we've laid it out as A, B, C, D, E. So what we've got is our airway equipment, and I'll come back to that in a second, but we've now got our breathing equipment up here. So within our breathing equipment, we've got our oxygen mask that we would use. So we've got in here a nasal cannula, a simple face mask, and a 100% non-rebreathable mask. We've then got our circulation, which is our wound management. And if we have a little look in here, what we've got is our dressings. So we've got a variety of dressings in there, which we'll look at in a different video. And then down on disability, if you can see this one down here, what we've got down here is our pelvic binder. We've got some sand splints, and there's actually a traction splint in this one as well for when we start looking at the level four skills. If we concentrate then on our airway, as our bag opens up and drops down, and you can see in here, and I put this up on the side, we've got our oxygen, we've got our suction equipment, which is the first thing we're likely to need, followed by our nasal pharyngeal airways, our OPAs, our oral pharyngeal airways, and our adult non-rebreather uh, bag valve and mask. So again, we can see all of that equipment is there ready for us to use. So from our prime position of working above the patient's head, our equipment is laid out in an ergonomic way, which saves our posture and our backs, so for manual handling, and it also allows us to have the right equipment at the right times as we go through our stepwise approach to our patient assessment. The other thing that we should always do is make people around us aware of potential trip hazards. As I've laid everything out with the AED, my bag, and even the patient, they are potential trip hazards. So just verbally making sure people are aware of that. The bag layout is absolutely vital. If you get this right before an incident, the incident will run much, much smoother. So that's the end of that video. Um, please don't forget to hit the like button and if you want to subscribe, you can keep up to date with our new videos. Until then, stay safe and goodbye.